Hi, my love. Welcome back. Today, I'm here with the second installment, the second question that we sent to Michael and Carol Santos. They're here to answer for us. Often, we get accused of living in a fantasy land when we're in these types of situations. So Michael and Carol broke down fantasy versus reality, as well as struggles with feeling like they were living in a fantasy and transferring into reality afterwards. Without making this intro too long, like I did last time, just sitting outside getting ready to edit their video. So I wanted to pop in, say hello, so you knew where you were. But I'm going to turn it over to Michael and Carol. Leave some love in the comments below. Let Michael and Carol know how much you appreciate them taking out time from their busy schedule to do this whole entire really long series for and with SPWF. I definitely did not feel like I was living in a fantasy. It was very real. Um, when I joined my life with Michael, it was a conscious choice and it was, it was my reality. And that was the case for the whole time he was incarcerated. Um, I can understand why you might ask that question. Um, I think, you know, because I was not with Michael before he came into prison. Um, he was already inside for 15 years. Uh, sometimes people want to say, oh, you're one of those girls um, or like a groupie and, um, you know, you're, you're um, attracted to somebody that you can't have. Uh, n that was not the case for me. I was, I was very um, in it. And it was a lot of hard work um, and a huge commitment to make sure that, you know, that everything that we were doing together could be done from my part on the outside and, and what he was able to do on the inside. Um, how was reality different from fantasy? Well, again, it was not like a fantasy for me. So when he was released, we had a, a really clear plan. We knew what we were doing. We'd worked really closely together um, through the whole 10 years to prepare for the time when he came home. So it was sort of like, okay, we're going to go out of this environment and we're going to go into this new environment, but we're continuing with the pattern of how we plan and how we execute those plans, if that makes sense. Things that I expected to be easy that were really hard, um, I think nothing really comes to mind um, other than um, the, the biggest, really the biggest challenge for me were family issues. Um, I don't, I guess I thought maybe those things would be better when he came home. Um, and it was very hard that they weren't, um, and were things I expected to be hard that weren't. Um, I, I think I, I sort of expected that like the macro, the big things for him transitioning from that oppressive environment to life in society might be hard, but it was not the macro issues because he was extremely well prepared and came out hit the ground running, um, which is exactly what he planned for the entire time he was inside. Um, so it was more the little things like I you know, we talked about earlier the you know, the dishware and just learning how to live. Men can be smelly. <laughs> some, prison, some prison behaviors were challenging. I wouldn't call those big things, but it's just, you know, a man and a woman learning how to live in the same small environment together and if you have somebody who's lived in a community of men for 26 years things that you know that you know maybe you wouldn't I, do i have learned to put the seat down <laughs> things you wouldn't do normally in the world you know when you're in that environment you just you don't really have to think about it because it's all men so those i would call the micro issues and you know it's just adjusting <clears throat> both of us to um, an environment that is um, really different than what he'd been accustomed to for a very long time and what we as a couple had been accustomed to um, for 10 years. That's how I would answer that. 
And I would say that maybe for me, there was a bit of a fantasy in the sense that I <clears throat> really believe that I could protect Carol from, from, from everything. And, you know, she, I, I made promises to her that I couldn't fulfill when I was in prison. When she came into my life, I told her that, that the world would accept her as my wife and she would immediately become a part of our family. And that is not something that I really had the right to promise because I can't speak for other people. I have a relationship with my family that has started from birth. And Carol came into my life when I was in my 15th or 16th year of imprisonment. And it wasn't the way that I wanted it to be. So I think it was a fantasy for me that we would just have an immediate family atmosphere because I loved her and I was committed to her and she was my wife. But the reality is both of us had lives um, in the sense that my family had been going through prison with me for 15 years and they and Carol had come into my life and Carol had a life. You have two children and she has life. And I just thought we would all be one family. But it didn't work out that way. And that was a fantasy for me that I could protect her. And I deeply regret that I've caused her some harm and some pain. And these are, I think, things that we didn't, I certainly didn't anticipate, you didn't anticipate. And we're still dealing with it today, even though we've been married for 17 years. And even though I cherish and love my wife and, and put her first and work hard to protect her, there were some scars that I caused because of family issues. And that's why I know that Carol says it was the hardest thing. Now, on the flip side, our devotion to each other has helped us carry through all of these things. And that goes to the next question. Was there a rocky time after my kid came home and how did you get through with it? I say that like any couple, we've had rocky times, but we get through it because we're committed to each other. And we've gone through 10 years of prison together. And every day, I think every day, I tell you I love you how many times? Many times. Many times I tell her I love her. And many times I tell you that I'm trying to make your life better. Always. And many times I lay out a plan and tell her how I'm going to make your life better. That's true. It's because I love Carol and because I feel blessed to have her in my life. And there has never been a time when I wanted anything different than to be her husband and to work hard to, to, to prove worthy of the love I receive from my strong prison wife. <laughs> yes, there were, um, there were definitely rocky times. Um, but as you said, we're, we're committed to each other and we love each other. And we didn't want to lose the history in our, in our family, you and me. And... So the, the hard times, they were painful, and they're still painful. But I know that Michael loves me, and I love him. And so when, there's, when you can't really say it or you can't talk about it, then you, you draw from that love and the long-term relationship and the history um, that we've built together. So that's how we get through it. Yeah. And, and so as I look at some of the other questions in this row, I think that they pretty much cover it, that, that, that our life has been really an unusual journey and that we fell in love inside of a federal prison. We nurtured our relationship through visiting and phone calls and letter writing. And Carol came into my life when I was already 15 or 16 years into the sentence. So I was really well adjusted to prison. It was new to her. The biggest challenge was definitely family. I, am, I mean, Carol's brother is a judge. And, <laughs> you know, it's generally a judge is not welcoming to somebody in prison coming in, in, into their family's life. And, and then I had challenges in my family. And, and uh, it, we've never really built that, that close family relationship that I think both of us would have liked to have had. So that was the fantasy, but we do try to make it better by, and we're very blessed. We have a really, a, a really fortunate life and that we've got 
um, a beautiful home and um, piece together. And, and, and I, for me, um, if there's 24 hours a day, how many days do I want to spend with you? Every day that ends with a Y. How many, how many hours of those days that end with a Y do I want to spend with you? 24. And what happens when you walk away from me? What do I say? <laughs> Come back. Yeah. So, you know, I'm very devoted to Carol and I'm very comfortable living in our life and, and dealing with the challenges that we have. And we definitely hope that you have such a positive experience in your relationship. And we do encourage you to continue using strong prison wives and families as a resource that will help you cope with the challenge. Ro is an excellent coach and an excellent guide. I learned from Ro um, about some technology matters and I'm just grateful that we consider her a friend and, and I'm really grateful to my strong prison wife. Okay, all right. Love them so, so, so much. You guys are interested in part one where they talk about who they are, their, how they met, how they got back in touch, et cetera, et cetera just click that video right there. And then if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that by clicking that little button right there. I hope I just didn't point to the same spot twice or just the red button below. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one.